we're going to talk about a couple different types of mapping with this. And the terminology can get a little bit confusing. But we're talking about something called parallax mapping or occlusion mapping. And what that means is that you're basically bump mapping an object to the extent that you're changing the silhouette. So for instance, this sphere here is actually just a sphere, just like this pink one. That It's the same thing. This is a clone of this one. But to model this, this would be thousands of polygons at least to get that kind of silhouette. And if you know anything about basic modeling, that's easy to understand. There's such a thing as displacement maps, but displacement maps still need the polygon structure in order to displace the object. So you're really not saving any polygons if you were to look at this and think that you were going to do it with displacement mapping. Um, what parallax mapping is, or relief mapping, or occlusion mapping, is the ability to take a texture and a normal map, which you should know what a normal map is by now, combine those with this type of plugin. This is one of them that you can use. And you apply this basically underlying script to the object, tell the object what to do when it's rendered and how to do it, and it's the equivalent of putting a bump map or a normal map on the object, but with a twist, and that twist is that we get that silhouette. Normal maps will not do this. A normal map would still have a round outline. It would look bumpy, but it wouldn't have the bumpiness here like you see in this one. Um, now, the terminology can get a little bit confusing, and the quick version is relief mapping is something that was coined about two years ago with the release of the Doom 3 and Quake 4 um, engines by id Software. Best I can tell. Might be wrong, but that's the best I can tell. And uh, relief mapping was this type of, of uh, bump mapping, I guess we could call it. Normal mapping. Uh, a year later, where this has been now integrated into many other engines and other companies have used it, the term parallax mapping has been a more common term to use for this. And parallax mapping is actually a little bit more descriptive because that's actually what we're seeing. We're seeing the ability to add parallax to a bump map. Parallax meaning as you move around this object, you would see the objects in three dimensions, especially on the silhouette. So that's what we're talking about. So if the terminology confuses you a little bit, I'm going to call this parallax mapping or relief mapping. I'm going to stick with those two terms, but there are a lot of other terms that actually mean the same thing or basically the same thing. If I close this, here's the sphere that I was talking about. You can see it's perfectly round, and there's really nothing special about the mesh. If I go to edged faces, that's all the polygons that I'm using on my sphere. So there's no way I could displace this to get that kind of effect. I would need hundreds of times more polygons to displace it to get that effect. So go back here to, oops, wrong place. Go back here, turn that off. Okay, so how is this done? Well, let's start here at the beginning and where do we get these plugins and how do we install them? I'm going to minimize Max and I have this folder on my desktop. It's called Relief Plugin for Max. You can get this out of my Outbox or you can get it from wherever you're loading this video from. And inside this little folder is a zip file if you'd like to give this to your friends. It's a free plugin. You can get it off the internet. This zip file contains all of these documents and it's been unzipped and once it's unzipped you get all of these documents. There's some uh, Max files, some image files, there's a little utility that we'll talk about later. There's some plugins. These four guys right here, the DLM, DLT, and DLU, are plugins for Max. There's a README file which will explain how to do this, but I found that it really didn't explain it all the way through. And if you just follow the directions, you'll get about three fourths of the way there. Nothing will happen, and you'll get frustrated. So read that after you watch this, and then um, uh, that's it in, in the folder. First thing I'm going to do is grab these little plugins. I'm going to copy them, and I'm going to go to my Max directory. I'm using Max 7, by the way, but as far as I know, this works with 6, 7, and 8. 
versions of Max. And I'm going to go to my plugins folder, and then I would just copy those or paste those into this folder. Now I'm not going to do that because I'm running Max and I've already done it. So you would just hit paste and then it would copy them over. Now when you start Max, uh, your Mac should start up and not have any errors. If it does have an error and it says can't find something, it's probably these that you just added. If you haven't seen the error before, you might want to take them back out at that point and go a different route. Maybe it's something with the version of Max. I don't know. It worked fine with mine. Now once you have those installed, what you want to look for, I'm going to actually, I guess I'm going to leave those up. What you want to look for is go to your material editor, grab a blank material, and let's see if they're installed. You're going to find them by going to maps, diffuse color, and it's right there is one of the new plugins that you're going to get or one of the new utilities from those plugins. That should be showing up. And the other one is located over here. You should be able to drop this down and see this one. Relief mapping data. Those are the two that were newly created by the plugin. So you got to have the plugins installed to get these two things. And you can't do what we're going to do if you don't have the plugin. Okay? All right, back to what we're doing here. Parallax mapping is, again, that ability to add that bumpy silhouette and control it. So in a game, you can have what looks to be very high poly mesh objects that are only one polygon. You don't even need a lot of polygons for this to work. And um, you can see, I'll render this again, but you can see that you're going to get this bumpiness associated with it. I mean, it looks real tactile. You could reach out and grab it. I'm going to show you a couple things that it doesn't do well, and then I'm going to show you how to apply this type of surface. The first one is, it does not deal with shadows very well. I'm going to render this with shadows. Now, this is in Max, of course. This is not in a game engine. I would guess that you could make your game engine read that parallax mapping, but I have a feeling that you're going to take a hit in rendering. Now, with shadow maps on, you can see that all I'm getting is the regular shadow map of the sphere that that object really is. It's not doing the bumpiness to it. Now, I tried this with all sorts of different mapping types in Max. I tried all the different types of mapping types. None of them worked. So I'm going on the assumption that uh, lighting and shadows will only reflect your original object. Now, in a game, that probably is okay. No one will ever notice. But um, the, uh, if there is a way around it, I don't know what that is. The other one is, zoom out a little bit here, that when you have an object intercept, inter, intercepting, intersecting the uh, object, watch what happens. It's going to go around where the circle, or where the sphere was originally. And... So you can't intersect the object and have it actually show that profile, which kind of makes sense since we know how this works. So those two things are drawbacks, but um, we can live without them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reset this, start from scratch. Here we go. Make my scene big. I'm going to make a sphere. So there's my sphere. I'm going to check real quick just to see where my edges are. Okay. And um, I'm going to make the sphere a little bit lighter color so I can see what's going on. And I'm going to put the sphere on a plane. Drag that out. And we'll move our sphere up. Whoops. There we go. Sphere. There we go. Move our sphere up. And we don't need to apply UV mapping onto this because the sphere already has mapping. Now I'm going to hop over here. I'm going to make this material that's going to do the parallax mapping for me. It's actually just a standard material. We don't change anything here. We go down to Maps, Diffuse, hit where it says None, and apply Relief Mapping 1.8. Or if there's a new version, you apply that one. 
It'll turn a little wider than we're used to. That's fine. Now, really all we need to deal with are some settings down here at this point. The color map is just a bitmap, and that is, let me get all of these showing, that is the, um, that's the original diffuse map. So that's your texture map. Nothing real special about the color map, nothing that we need to do different than what we've been doing all along. I'm going to apply this, and if I render this, we'll see where we're at so far. So nothing too special. Nothing we haven't been able to do before. We'll go back up our stack. In the next one, under normal map, it's a bit map. And as you would guess, we are going to apply our normal map into that, which is, if you're used to using normal maps, that's the telltale violet and blue and green normal map look. In my folder, it's called Rock Bump Targa. It needs to be a Targa. It does not need to be a 32-bit Targa. And I'm going to hit Open. And now if I render this, it's actually a little bumpy. You can't tell. Not much. And we'll go back up one. And I'm going to drag this down to where it says Depth Map. And I'm going to make it an instance. The instance part is important, and the depth map needs to be a normal map, as far as I know. Now, that part may change. I was playing around with it before making the video. You might try a grayscale image in here, or a 32-bit alpha, and that might be able to get your depth map as well. But for the time being, I'm going to use that normal map. Okay, now if we render this, we're not going to get anything too special. Actually, what you're seeing is the depth normal map kicking in. You saw it change a little bit. It has a little bit of shadowing there. I'm going to hop over here to um, the uh, self-shadows I'm going to check and leave everything the same and relief mapping data. And I'm going to make sure that this reads 2. That's going to become important here in a little bit. And I'm going to say silhouette. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to hop back out here. I'm going to drag this now down to bump, and I'm going to make it an instance. Again, we want them to be instances because we want to make sure the changes take effect. Actually, what I'm going to do... Let me see if that worked. Yeah. I'm going to turn these two off right now, um, just so you can see it rendering. I'll come back to those in a second. And now I'm going to drag it under opacity. And this is the part that the readme file or the document that it's included with it, I don't remember reading it. I need to make it an instance. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow it to be bumpy on the sides now. Think of it as the opacity is actually what makes it see through on the sides. I go to a, through my opacity setting here. I'm going to click self shadows, relief mapping, and make sure silhouette is applied. Now, if I render this, I'll get my error again. It's going to freak out. That's okay. It's actually going to turn gray there. So that's all right. What I need to do is hop over here under Modify, click the sphere, and I need to apply Relief Mapping Data. I've made it into a button here, but it's also in your drop-down list right here. And now it's got Relief Mapping Data. That data channel right there ties into this data channel right there. That's the relief mapping one, so it's kind of important. And now I'm going to render this, and what I'm going to end up with is a very shrunken little rock here. It's kind of a sad little rock. He's a little too shrunken up, so what I'm going to do is come back up here to my depth space, and I'm going to put in 0.5 and render that. Oh, 0.5 won't work. How about 5? Much better. There we go. And now you can see that it's bumpy, and you can see that it's actually deforming around the edges. Knock that down a little bit more. I'll make that a three. I don't like it that bumpy. There we go. A little bit more puffed out. You can see now it's still bumpy. So I've made the setting work. You can also drag this into other areas. Specular level is a, a fun one because that will actually make it look wet if you wanted to or something along those lines. I'm going to um, hop over here and add a light to this scene just so you can see how it deals with lighting. Uh, I'll make it a target spot. Just 
drag this down there, and that's way off. I can already tell. There we go. And where's my light? Is this my light? Yeah. I'm gonna raise that light up. There we go. go over here to the top. Just gonna wing that around to the front. Now I'll render that, and what we'll get is a little bit of um, shadowing on it. You can see it's self-shadowing. That's this button right here. So if I go, all these are instances of each other, by the way, so it doesn't matter which channel you go into. It's uh, this one. If I turn off self-shadows and render this now, you'll see that that darkened area there is less so that it's not casting shadows on itself. Also, you can go up here to the top, and you can set the, the specular level. And we can, when we render it, we're going to get a specular level now associated with that, so it'll look even bumpier. Okay?